Welcome to the fifth session of our Discipleship Institute. In this session, we will be exploring leadership and its impact on parish culture. We've covered in previous sessions the various pieces of the puzzle, mission and vision, divine renovation, the game plan, and our ministries and parish structure. Now we are adding the leadership puzzle piece. When we think of leaders, who comes to mind for you? Abraham Lincoln, Nelson Mandela, Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King Jr., Margaret Thatcher, Steve Jobs. What about leaders in faith? Who comes to mind? Jesus Christ, Buddha, Martin Luther, Muhammad, Billy Graham, St. Mother Teresa, St. Francis of Assisi, St. John Paul II, Dorothy Day. Let's look a little closer to home. Think discipleship. Who are the people who come to mind when we think of a follower of Jesus? Who talks the talk and walks the walk? Your spouse, your son or daughter, your brother or sister, Father Tom, Mark Casper, Executive Director of St. Elizabeth's Catholic Charities, Chuck Mattingly with the Franciscan Kitchen, Maria Price, Executive Director of St. John's Homeless Shelter. Maybe it's your boss, a council member, a civil servant, a coach, a mentor, a director. What do these folks all have in common? Passion, service to others, authenticity, a sense of integrity, humility, empathy, a genuine desire to be a light in the world and make the world a better place. Does being a leader of faith, a Christian leader, look different than other leaders? You bet it does. Christian leaders are people who possess the characteristics and attributes mentioned earlier. The difference is that in all they do, they do it with the mindset or heart set of a disciple, a follower of Christ. Ironic, isn't it? The type of leaders who help build the kingdom of God are followers. A disciple is someone who has encountered Christ, been transformed by that encounter, and is compelled to share that transformation with others. We are in the business of growing disciples and making disciples here at St. John Paul II. It is disciples who bring authenticity, passion, and joy to our parish community and beyond. It is disciples who are open to the work of the Holy Spirit within themselves, in others, and in our parish. They cooperate with grace. It is disciples who lead others to Christ and journey with them in developing a personal relationship with Jesus. It is disciples who are called to lead, to be an influencer and agents of change. Our job, create a space for this to happen create a space to live out our mission of building God's kingdom by growing disciples and making disciples through love of God and neighbor. And it takes leaders who lead, leaders who invite, leaders who affirm gifts and talents, leaders who do not settle for mediocrity, leaders who call forth the best in every individual. A church that makes missionary disciples has at its heart a desire and capacity to bring people from immaturity to maturity, to advance people along the road of constant growth, not moral perfection, but an ongoing transformation process that draws people into a deeper, more mature relationship with Jesus. So how do we do this? Let's get into the toolbox and look at a couple of tools that can help us. First up, how do we view leadership? The Catholic Church has at its roots a hierarchical model of leadership. Everything runs and operates from the top down. At the top sits the pastor. Below him is the pastoral team who report to him. Below that is the parish pastoral council and divine renovation team who work towards governing and leading the parish in collaboration with the pastoral staff and pastor. 
Then below that are commission heads and team liaisons who report to the council. Commission members to commission heads. Committee members to commission members and all parishioners to committee members. This is the traditional way of parish structure. It fosters a sense of reporting to the next level of command, so to speak. With reporting to the pastor at the top of the pyramid, this traditional model can stifle lay leadership and negate the power and fruits of subsidiarity. Decisions made and actions implemented by those closest to the situation or the ministry. Paradigm shift. What if it looked like this? If we invert the pyramid, we change the entire paradigm. We change not only how we look at leadership, but we help foster parishioner ownership and we move from a reporting to a supporting and nurturing of. The pastor supports the pastoral team and through his support and nurturing, the pastoral team supports and nurtures the pastoral council and divine renovation team. The parish council and divine renovation support commission heads and team liaisons. Commission heads and team liaisons to commission members. Commission members to committee members and committee members to all parishioners. What are the fruits of this paradigm? Number one, supporting of and nurturing of one another. If done well, it flows throughout the entire model of leadership. Number two, fosters a sense of collaboration, a we're all in it together mindset. Number three, empowers lay leadership. If this pastor's role changes from decision maker and standard setter to one of an encourager, affirmer, and cheerleader, then folks will take the cue from the pastor and look to other sources of leadership. Number four, it's just good church. All of the things that we have seen in the previous sessions, mission and vision, divine renovation, the game plan, our, mini our parish ministries, and structure become fruitful. Fruitful because parishioners take ownership. Another tool in the toolbox, fact, faithful, available, contagious, and teachable leaders. Culture is what is truly valued, presumed, normative, and celebrated. This means to have a leadership culture, we must truly value and celebrate any time someone inspires or equips others to live out mission of our parish. No matter what size a parish is, hired staff will never be able to lead to do the work of ministry that is required in that parish. The primary obligation of a staff member is not to do the work of the ministry, but to identify, call forth, and equip parishioners for the work of ministry. This means that for any parish, designed to move from maintenance to mission, the leadership of the parish must be intentional about raising up other leaders and working to bring about a culture of leadership. Let's look at fact leaders and the charisms that are needed to effectively foster a leadership culture. F stands for faithful. By this we mean faithful to the teachings of the church. The level of faithfulness requires depends upon the leadership role. A represents available. Many people are sincerely well-intentioned, but just do not have the ability to follow through on what they say they will do or would like to do. We need to look at past history and patterns to discern if someone is dependable. C is for contagious. We want people who are fun, joyful and contagious to be in leadership. Leadership is about influence. So leaders have to influence people in a life-giving way. We want life-giving, not toxicity. We wish for those who exhibit the fruits of the Holy Spirit, spoken of in Galatians 5.22, to grow influence. And those who exhibit the works of the flesh, idolatry, strife, jealousy, anger, dissension, to diminish. One can be very dependable and work hard, but can cause so much damage if they are toxic. T means teachable. 
Every single person can grow as a leader. There is much to learn. No matter how gifted a person is, if they show a lack of humility and an unwillingness to learn, that person will not move down the leadership pipeline. Teachable also refers to a person's willingness to work with the leadership of the parish. We just mentioned leadership pipeline, and that is our third tool from the toolbox. Leadership pipeline is a great image. The point of a pipeline is for things to flow through it. Sometimes, however, pipes can become blocked and nothing moves along. Often in the life of churches, certain people get into positions of leadership and block the development of others. Leadership in parishes is not a lifelong appointment. What does St. John Paul II's leadership pipeline look like? Leading does not have to be an all or nothing affair. We need to give people increasing responsibility as they grow in their capacity to being faithful, available, contagious, and teachable. We are using a five-tiered approach to leadership. The tiers are task, coordinator, director, ministry leader, and pastoral team. This is the template for each ministry in our parish to develop its own pipeline. Task involves low responsibility, has low influence, and allows for a higher turnover. Coordinator, more responsibility, higher degree of influence in order to coordinate the various tasks of the specific area of ministry, allows for minimal turnover of position. Director, high level of responsibility, high level of influence, keeps the full scope of the ministry forefront, knowledgeable on all facets of ministry, low level of turnover. Ministry leader, keeper of the vision or goal of the ministry, creates an apprenticing culture, not to meet a need, but to raise up new leaders and expand the ministry. Critical piece of the pipeline process, a succession plan. Pastoral team, Primary role is to support the various team members of the ministry, provide resources, training, guidance, assist in troubleshooting and being a sounding board to foster creativity and new approaches to ministry and its tasks. Here's an example of a leadership pipeline in one of our parish ministries. Ta-da, the turkey shoot. We are going to look at one branch of the turkey shoot leadership, task. Serve a shift in the cake booth. Notice the five-tiered cake. Coordinator runs the cake booth. Recruit shift volunteers. Director for outdoor venues oversees setup and running of various games and outdoor venues. Ministry leader, turkey shoot chairperson, oversees all setup, implementation, and teardown. Keeper of the vision and adopting an apprenticing model of leadership. Sets up training in collaboration with directors and coordinators. Pastoral team, director of operations, provides support for ministry leaders, navigates and troubleshoots with ministry leader for successful turkey shoots. That's one example using the five-tiered model with this terminology. The pipeline is about identifying the roles in a ministry and the appropriate level of responsibility as well as identifying what is required of a person for a good fit, what can be taught, what qualities must they have, getting the right people in the right places to volunteer, utilize their gifts and strengths. A leadership pipeline for Alpha would look like Alpha Helper, Alpha Co-Host, Alpha Host or Speaker, Alpha Team or Leader, and Connect Group Leader. So those are our three main tools in the toolbox. Number one, leadership model, inverting the pyramid. Number two, fact leaders, faithful, available, contagious, teachable. Number three, leadership pipeline, developing a five-tier approach for ministries. Another very important tool in the toolbox is you. St. John Paul II, truly can't move 
from maintenance to mission without leaders like you, disciples like you, disciples who want to call upon the gifts and talents of every parishioner and find a spot or a way for them to serve and have ownership in fulfilling our mission. Last note, a leader with no one following is just a person going on a walk. Be a part of the culture change. Be a leader. Be an influencer. Be a disciple. Be you.